annoying. I've got a Muppet sticking out of my fucking shirt. I still don't like that. Okay, maybe just unzip this a little more. This station is designed to alert you to make your broadcast. This is only a test. Okay, so M4A1 Block 1. This is. This is my quest for the cloniest of clones. Like I finally decided like I should probably have a pure clone. And so I'm building the I'm building the rifle that I built or not that I built, but that I had uh, in Fallujah, Iraq in 2000, uh, 2004 during the big gunfight there for the second go around of the push to take uh, Fallujah, Iraq during Operation Phantom Fury. So this is the guy and we're going to put the GWAT patina on here. We're going to do the GWAT paint job. Now there's some nuance to this. Like this, I'm going to do this. I'm basically doing this like how we used to do it, like at the fob where you just tape up the things that you don't want paint on. It's not going to look nice. It's not going to look pretty. Like if you guys can see, like my tape isn't cut in like nice, neat little squares. It's not the purpose of the GWAT paint job. Like the GWAT paint job was just to offer visual and uh, just a quick visual breakup of the rifle for the environment that you're in. And also it's to decrease the uh, signature in an IR environment because black actually triples your detection range under IR. Like black absorbs all the light in every spectrum. So if you got any black kit on at all and you have no, uh, nothing to lighten that up or break it up under the, uh, in the IR, uh, it will stick out like a fucking broken dick. So. Put some paint on your stuff, guys, if you don't want to get detected easily under night vision goggles. So that's the purpose of this. The, like I said, the tape job, it's nothing fancy. You tape up like critical components so you can see, we just put stuff over the muzzle. You don't want paint going down your breech, obviously. This length of tape on here, I have a Surefire, uh, like Gen 1 flash hider on here, which we'll talk about more later in the next part of the video. Tape up your lenses, tape up your LEDs, tape up the lenses on your on the pack, tape up your front sight tip, uh, tape up your magwell. You don't want paint going up inside your magwell. Obviously, your objective lens and your ocular lens on your optics, uh, and uh, any anything else you don't want paint on rear, rear full down iron sight aperture. You want your iron sights to stay black so that you can see them a lot easier in different light conditions. If they're painted up, sometimes it's really difficult to see where you're, if you're, if you got your iron sights all camoed up and you're using iron sights or you need to flip up your backup irons for whatever reason, uh, maybe you took a bullet through your ACOG and now you have to pull that thing off and throw it aside, which I have watched happen in a firefight in Fallujah. Uh, and now you're down to using your iron sights. You want to be able to still have a nice hard black front side tip and hard black rear side aperture so that you can see your iron sights more effectively in different light conditions. If they're all camoed up, they will get lost in the uh, sauce, so to speak. So yeah, make sure ejection port cover's closed. Uh, take your sling off. And we're just gonna throw the very first base coat on this guy. Like I usually, I like to just go uh, light to dark with my with my paint jobs. So we're going to pull the sling off. We're gonna pull buttstock off so we can hit the buffer tube. And then we are going to paint this guy. First thing you wanna do, especially since we've had different temperature changes, these have been sitting in the garage, we haven't used them for a long time. You wanna test your nozzle to make sure it's not gonna spit sputter chunks of paint all over your paint job. So you just wanna, whatever you're, you're painting on, nice, nice light strokes, make sure, I don't know, six to eight inches away from whatever you're spraying on and just make sure you're not getting thick, chunky paint sputter. Make sure your nozzle's not clogged up. Once that's done, we're just going to apply a nice light, even coat of base color on here. And like I said, I always go light to light to dark. So we're going to start with FDE uh, or like a sand color. Uh, light color is our, our uh, base coat. And same thing with like what we were painting over here. You just want to keep it about six to eight inches away and just like nice light strokes. Like so. And you don't even have to get it like completely coated because we're gonna put several different colors. As you can see over here, we got 
all the different colors. We probably won't use all of those. We'll probably use the coyote. We'll use this dark green over here and we'll probably use some, some dark brown. Uh, the sage green is like more for like hunting applications here up in Wyoming. And we're probably not gonna put that light sage green on here, but we may, I don't know, we'll see. We may use it for some like some contrasting. Make sure you hit all your angles, getting underneath stuff. I don't have to go too crazy with this M900 because it's got, it was already FDE. So the next thing you wanna do, we're gonna take a little darker of a color. This is more like a coyote uh, brown. So we're gonna start, what we're gonna start doing now that we got a good tan base coat on there, we're gonna start layering in uh, some shadow and contrast aspects with with a little bit darker of a brown here. And this tip's a little bit fucked up, so we may get a little bit of splatter, but when you're on the fob, it's 110 degrees outside and you're just trying to get your camo, gun camoed up, we don't really give a fuck about things like that. So what we're gonna do is just we're gonna come in here with some, some just stripes. We'll have it so that you like get hard saturation in one area and then it'll fade out. See how it's starting to splatter on the side of the peck there right there? That's because the tip's all messed. Now that we've layered in a little bit of contrast on there, we're gonna go ahead and let that, we're gonna go ahead and let that cure up and dry a little bit. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna do some veg and some hard lines on this thing. Okay, now we're gonna take this darkest color, this darkest of the darkest browns that we have here, and we're gonna test spray this guy. Oh yes, yeah, so this one's doing better, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two sticks and I'm gonna put these guys together because what I wanna start doing is creating a kind of a small dark stripe element that's going to cut into and along these other uh, darker elements that I put in with the, uh, the, the coyote to help give it a little bit extra contrast and, and pop and break up. So we're gonna come in like this. Once again, not trying to be perfect. Um, and I just wanna be clear, like, these are rattle can jobs, okay? The nice thing about them is if you fuck them up, you can just hit this thing with paint stripper, wipe it down, let it sit for a while, wipe it down. I mean, be careful putting paint stripper on certain type of plastics, like, it might not be great to put on the pack or on the light because we don't know how that stripper is gonna affect the polymer. Um, or the rubber, so be careful with that. But uh, on the metal, you can hit it with metal and wipe it down, let it sit on there and wipe it down. Hit it with a, um, a nylon bristle brush and help scrub it off. Then uh, let it sit and dry and then you can start from scratch um, and you can touch it up. If you want something that's super immaculate, super crisp, super detailed, that's when you would go in to get into a Cerakote job, which is professionally done. The whole gun gets broken down. There's lots of steps and processes to it. We'll probably cover it in another video. But for right now, we're just talking about some FOB G-Watt action here. And we're going to use some sticks right now to start adding a little, little contrast. Okay, so you see like how now we're starting to get some lines, some geometry in there, some breakup. Okay, so see how that creates that really hard contrasting line in there? That's gonna give you really good breakup at medium to long range. All right, then once you get kind of some contrast, you've got some contrast with these dark lines and you can come in and like maybe just take the paint and just like hit some high, some of these like high features that stick out a little bit, you can hit those and darken those up just a little bit. Those will help offer a little bit of break up too, like front sight post. 
This guy. That guy and that guy. All right. So that's a pretty good start to getting some break up. Now what we'll do is we'll come back in with some really dark green and we'll get some grass and some other veg and we'll start folding in a little bit of green on this guy. I was gonna use some veg, but this is actually a technique that Kato's used on a couple of his rifles using these uh, using string and just kind of overlaying it over the top of the, and it's just, um, you know, landscaping. You can use twine, yarn, balls of yarn, whatever. Um, if you're an airsoft kid and you're stealing your mom's really expensive alpaca yarn, though, she might whip your ass, so be careful with that. All right, let's go ahead and Go ahead and just dust in some uh, deep force green over the top of this string and see what kind of design we get. Pull the string off and there you go. So as you can see, you're getting some really cool, neat designs in there some, that are bringing out the highlights in the, uh, in the patterns. We'll go ahead and continue on. We'll do this some more on the buffer tube. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> well, that's actually good because then it's creating all of these little geometries here that are gonna help with your micro patterning at close range for good breakup at close range. <sighs> so there you go. So now you can see how you're starting to get an overlay of color. It's starting to like pop a little bit. You've got some highlights, you've got some dark elements, you've got some color layering, and now you're starting to get some shadow and uh, good breakup going on there. Only that's the uh, pistol grip and it's gonna be the first thing to get rubbed off. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's the, that's the brilliance of rattle canning stuff is that it doesn't have to be perfect and actually the imperfections sometimes, especially as you use this rifle and take it to the range and it wears on your gear and all where you grip the weapon and flip your levers and run the latches and the, all the mechanisms on it, it starts to wear and that black starts to poke back through a little bit. It just adds to the overall effectiveness of the pattern. So well, let's hit this ACOG a little bit better. There we go. Then, yeah, I really like the string technique. Taking a look at this, you could kind of see some of the overspray in these areas. You can kind of see where we went a little dark in here and in here, and that's okay. If you feel like you went a little bit dark and now you feel like the rifle is just a little bit too dark, you can always just grab another geometry. For this case, we're gonna use some of these chives that we plucked out of the garden here, um, and you can overlay them in some of these areas that you feel are a little bit too dark and then you can come back in with your base coat that we used, that was real light, that, that uh, FTE, and now you can come in and put some more elements in there to come back in and now re-lighten those areas and offer a little bit more breakup that you felt was too dark. So we'll just do that in a couple of spots here and here. Okay, so now you can see you're starting to layer more and you're starting to bring different layers and contrasts out to where it's mimicking where things would fall in shadow in certain vegetation. It's giving you good visual breakup and then it's also giving you good highlights where the sun would be shining on certain objects. So if we come in here on this front sight tip, we just give it just a little bit of love, just like that, boom, just like that and that'll help bring those highlights back out if it gets a little bit too dark. So that's the beauty of it. As I said before, just play with it, have fun with it, you know, craft it to your own. Obviously this is a GWAT 
uh, color palette and pattern for like high desert area, which is good for some parts of where we're at here in Wyoming. For this particular locale here in the Teton uh, area, in the Bridger Tetons, it's like heavy, heavy coniferous and deciduous forest area, lots of green. I would probably go with a darker, more green pattern if I was painting this rifle specific to this area. But this is not specific to the area, this is FOB G-Watt Rattle Can 101. All right, guys, that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Just a simple how to paint a rifle video. Uh, we're going to continue to pump out videos like this for you guys. Tips, tricks, hacks, training tips, drills, and uh, adventures here on the Lone Element channel. I hope you guys are loving the content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, push all the buttons, do all the things. And please, please come over and join us on Patreon. We've got some unique and cool stuff going on. And we look forward to seeing you over there. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you next week. Peace.